So today we have this Lacey Porsche design external hard drive that came in. It was making a beeping sound. If you guys recall from the previous video that I made, when it's beeping, that means the heads are stuck. And on this model, the two and a half inch in general, the platters are stuck. The heads don't, don't allow the platters to move. So the, the head stack assembly is resting on the platters and the head, the um, platters cannot spin. So let's go ahead and see what it sounds like. So that, that's what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and open this up. So to, to open this cover, you simply go into the here. Like so lift that all around and lifts up. Just a heads up, if data is important to you, you should not be opening your own drive up. You should never open your own drive up if the data is important. No matter how easy it looks like, no matter what you think you can do, the best thing to do is to actually bring it into someone who has experience with hard drives, who knows what they're doing, and then that way, if you do have any problems that you think you can't solve, you can just pass it down to them and they'll be able to take care of it. They'll, you know, they'll solve all of the issues that normally arise with stuck heads. And I know that everyone says this, but I don't think it's stressed enough. Don't open your drive if you're not a data recovery technician that has experience. The way this drive is made, it uses this film around it. This, by the way, the family of this hard drive, this is known as a Rosewood Seagate. So that's the family name, it's a Rosewood. This is one of the slim drives that look like this, pretty slim. A lot of data recovery professionals don't like working on these drives. They have issues with the heads a lot of the time, even after replacement where the heads would work for four hours, five hours, and then crash. Those who work on hard drives know what I'm talking about. So to get access to this, to the internal of this hard drive, you have to go around the corner and remove this, this label here nicely. I've already done this, but I'm using this as an example to show you guys. So Seagate decided to leave everything really exposed. If you look in here, there are there's a huge gap here. There's no rubber gasket or anything like that to keep the air from coming in or out. They just use this label here, really. It's not near impossible to remove. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's supposed to keep the air inside the hard drive. Terrible design, in my opinion. and really annoying to remove but it is what it is so to remove this cover you have t5 t5 all around and then this one here is actually a penelope so it's a penelope 4 let's go ahead and uh, remove these quickly When I remove this cover, I like to lift it up from this side here, gently, hold this down and then push up, like so. And then I grab the rest with the tweezers, just so that you don't want to touch the platters or anything like that. So if you see here, the heads are clearly stuck. They're not on the ramp. In the previous video, I showed where the heads are supposed to be. The heads, when the hard drive is off, are supposed to be parked on this orange ramp here. And that's how it's supposed to be when it's off. So this one, when I powered it up, it beeps because the platters cannot spin. Again, this isn't a live case. This has been recovered already. Um, a lot of, a couple of people mentioned that you shouldn't be uh, over the platters. Of course, not not on a live you know case, but you need it for demonstration purposes. So. I have to do that to show you guys what it, what I'm talking about. What I personally do after a case like this or during a case like this is unstick the heads. Now in this one, I don't normally use a tool to unstick them, especially this one, you don't have much room to work with here. On the Rosewood drives, even replacing the heads is, is a bit annoying because of the way 
that it's done. Maybe I'll make another video and then you'll see what I'm talking about. For the most part though, this one you cannot use the heads uh, or the head unstick tools to get the heads out of the platters and back into the ramp. Let's go ahead and grab a screwdriver. So what you would have to do is you'd have to take a screwdriver, put it on here in the middle of, you know, pretty much it's, it's a, it's a panel, panel of fort. Put it in this screw right here. And then at the same time, you're gonna twist counterclockwise and pull the head stack assembly back into the parking position. A lot of times when the head stack assembly or the heads are stuck on the platters and you move them back, you get some bad sectors in certain areas or certain LBAs on the hard drive. So you, would, you will definitely need a special tool to handle those sectors and skip them and perhaps you know read them backwards or something similar to that. So a lot of the time it's not just moving the head stack assembly back in the parking position and plugging it into let's say your regular Windows computer. You will run into issues where you get bad sectors from those, you know, that area that the heads were stuck on. Each case is different, but from what I've seen, that usually tends to happen. It's gonna be really quick. It's not gonna take any time or anything like that. And it should be done in one motion so that you don't spin the platters without moving the head stack assembly. So back to what I was saying, whenever I do this, I unstick the heads, right? So I take the heads off the, the, the platters. I take them, I inspect them under the microscope. If I see any damage to them, I replace them. Sometimes, majority of the times actually on this model I replace them anyway just because you do not want to mess with the client's data you only have one chance in data recovery by the way a lot of people think that this is similar to what you know Lewis does similar to you know a lot of other repairs it's not data recovery especially with this type of issue you only have one chance at the data if you blow it the data is gone and a lot of people can't stress that enough you only have one chance to get the data back there's no room for errors nothing must go wrong in, in this case and if something goes wrong then you're screwed and you're essentially you've let your client down and you know everybody down in that case I like to use my favorite tweezers here this guy and again just you can take a four panel load screwdriver you know, put it in the screw and at the same time you're gonna rotate and pull the head stack assembly back So it should be in that motion. When you put them back, you want to make sure that they're free to move, that there's nothing else wrong with it. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. Normally when I unstick the heads, I take them out, inspect them under the microscope, look for any damage, and I swap them anyway. I have a donor normally open for this type of drive, the Rosewood family. That way, you know, you, you don't risk anything because you, you, never, you never take a shortcut when it comes to data recovery. You always go through the longer process that's more secure and safe rather than taking a shortcut to save you know, 20 minutes of your day. That's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and um, plug this in to, make, to show you guys what, it show, what happens and what shows up. All right, so after unsticking the heads, let's go ahead and hook it up to the PC3000. I went ahead and hooked it up to SATA zero with the terminal connection so that it will give us the output and what the drive is telling us. Let's go ahead and power it on. You get the busy register and then it doesn't look like it's beeping. There you go, it becomes ready. You hit auto detect here and what do you know, it shows up perfectly fine. Just uh, Ignore that. So we get the capacity, we get the correct serial number, which is important, and that we get that it's a Seagate and the model number. And the output from the terminal doesn't really give anything concerning or worrying. Um, so for the most part, this recovery is done. That wraps it up for this video, and as always, I hope you learned something. And please, if you have an issue like this, do not try to do it on your own, because you'll surely cause a damage, some damage of some sort. You don't want that because partial recovery. So even though it looks easy, there's a lot that can go wrong and you won't know that something went wrong until it's too late. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day.